Hello and welcome to Tutorial Tuesdays. In this episode it's going to be another short one, but I wanted to show you another application for drivers and Blender or procedural modeling. So we are going to make a simple spiral staircase, but the cool thing about this is that it can be controlled like so, just with uh, sliders, so you can say, hey, I want this many rotations, I want this many stairs, and I want it to be this tall. So it's a pretty simple tutorial, but it's just another application for drivers with the array modifier, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, to start out, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my screencast keys so you can see what I'm doing here, but let's go ahead and make a cylinder. This will be the base for our staircase. You can make something more complicated if you want to, but I am not going to. Step one is to hit GZ1 to move it up so that the origin is at the base of the cylinder because that way when we scale it, it will scale from the base. Then we want our base to be a little bit thinner and how you can approach that is scaling out on every axis except the Z axis which how you accomplish that is scale shift Z and that will scale it on every axis except the Z axis. You can do the same for shift Y, shift X, whatever you please. Then we're going to go ahead and create our stair. And how we're going to do that is with a cube and we're going to go into edit mode to scale it down so it matches with the cylinder and then we are going to scale it down like so to make a step. And we want our top and bottom to match and then we want the origin of the step to be at the base as well just so it is convenient and you'll you'll probably understand why that is later so to make this go to the origin we can go to our transformations and put the Z to zero in edit mode and it will go to the origin so now we have a step I'm going to make mine tapered like this you can do whatever you want so there is an interesting option in the array modifier let's go ahead and add an empty and I'll explain why in a second the empty is so in our array modifier like so we can turn off the relative offset so it's not being offset at all and let's go ahead and up the count to 10 just to experiment we're going to control that with a driver later so the interesting option in the array modifier is the object offset and what that allows us to do is offset the stair based on our empty object so now if we rotate this the stairs will rotate based on the empty and it will also offset based on the location of it but we're not going to use that so the next step in creating our procedural staircase is to create a controller object I usually use a an empty cube for that and that is where we will store all of our properties and sliders so they're all in one convenient location also what this allows us to do is later parent all of the objects to this empty so we can move it around rotate it whatever and nothing will be affected it's sort of like a container object for our procedural model so our first step will be to increase the count of the stairs and have them match the height of the cylinder and how we're going to do that is go ahead and open our graph editor like so and go to the drivers menu this is how we access our object drivers so for the Z we want to use constant offset make sure our object is scaled to 111 under the scale the dimensions don't matter and then we're going to add a driver to the Z offset so add single driver and this driver will be as follows basically we want to say that the offset is going to equal the height of the staircase divided by the count so we also go, need to go ahead and add a co custom property for our count as well so we'll do count make this an integer since you can't have a half a step you can have only whole steps so if you make this number the property value an integer then you will only be able to slide it in integers or whole numbers which is exactly what we want and let's say we want our user to be able to create a hundred stairs so we will set the maximum value to 100 and the minimum value to 1 because there has to be at least one step. Then we are going to come in here and add a driver to the count and that will be based on our empty object empty.001 you can name the empty if you really want to to make it easier for you but for such a simple object I'm not going to. Then we need a single property 
and our property is open bracket quotation mark count quotation mark close bracket and that will go to our custom property of count so now if we rotate this our count should oh wait I need two first of all this is our variable this is our driver right here so right now it's at a hard number of 10 we need to be it make it based on our variable to so to do that we just type var in our expression like so so now the count is based purely on the empty and then for our offset we're going to add a couple variables these are going to be the cylinder we'll call this variable height and it will be the dimensions too because if you remember from the previous tutorial it's dimensions 0 1 2 not dimensions 1 2 3 and 0 is x 1 is y 2 is z and we really want to go with the z-axis otherwise it will offset something strange so that is our height variable then our count variable is going to be the empty that we have and it is going to be open bracket quotation marks count quotation marks close bracket then our expression is going to be the height of the stairs divided by the count that's how much we want to offset each step because if we offset it just based on the height then if we upped our count let's go ahead and give our staircase 20 steps then it's going to offset the stair based on the height of the object it's going to go the height the height the height the height so we want this to be the height divided by how many steps we have so it will end at the top of the staircase so we do that by typing height divided by count and now our stairs no matter how many we have will match the cylinder then we want to th then uh, you'll notice if we go up to 20 again that this is incorrect because it's not matching perfectly at the top and how we do that is count minus one and that is just how the math works out we want it to be divided by the count minus one not the count so if we have say 20 stairs we want it to be divided by 19 then you'll notice that it still doesn't match up at the top and that's because our origin is at the base of the stair and we're not taking into account the height of each stair as we're offsetting it so we want to subtract the dimensions of the stair on the z-axis and how we get that right now these dimensions are inaccurate and that's because it's taking the dimensions of the stair and it's incorporating our array modifier so we can turn off our array modifier briefly to control C this number copy it then turn it back on and then subtract that number and you're gonna notice that this is still incorrect it's going to be completely wrong and this is because this is offsetting each stair minus the stair so it's not going to be correct so again we need to divide this by the count so we'll put this in parentheses just to be clean and then divide our stair dimension Z minus over the count the amount of stairs that we have now you'll notice that our stairs match up pretty close to the top of the staircase now no matter how many we have it will always match and that is pretty cool which I just need to re-enter that because we went too low so we actually need to set our minimum to 2 just so it never errors out like this so now no matter how many stairs we have it will always pretty much match up with the top of the cylinder and thus we have two apparently it's not matching up perfectly but that's alright because what staircase has two steps we could come up with a more complex algorithm to solve for that but it's not necessary because for higher amounts of steps it does not matter then we want to be able to add rotation to our stairs so since we have it set to object offset for the empty if we rotate this you'll notice that the stairs are going to rotate around but how it's not a very cool procedural staircase if the rotation amount is like a hard set number so we're going to go ahead and add a property and this one is going to be rotations and then we'll go ahead and we have this property from earlier that we created and this will be height because we're going to want a property for height eventually and we'll set the maximum here to 20 and the minimum to 1 and in 
uh, non-integer value is perfectly fine for this number. So for the rotations, let's say you want to give them the option to make, I don't know, 16 seems like a pretty good number, and then 0 is fine as a minimum, although this staircase is currently unclimbable if our person is short. If you're a tall person, this staircase is probably pretty climbable since it is short. But we want to take our Z rotation for our controller object right here, not our controller object, for our empty that's controlling the rotation of the array, and we're going to add a single driver for that. Now, what we do here is we say um, we want the offset to be the rotations. We're, we're going to name a variable rotations. Right now it's invalid because we haven't defined our variables. But the equation is going to be rotations times 360, which is the degrees. And that's actually incorrect. I'm just proving a point here. And you'll see that in a second. But let's go ahead and set up our rotations variable. And this will be the empty.001, which is our controller object, single property, open bracket, quotation mark, rotations, quotation mark, close bracket. And then if we re-enter this now, if we rotate it like so, you'll notice that it rotates. And it is completely incorrect right now. And that's because all equations in here are in radians. It's not degrees like this. You'll notice that the degrees value is very different from this value, and that's because it's in radians. And a very easy way to um, solve for radians is to go into Google and type 360 degrees to radians. And I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so here we are at Google, and I'm going to type in 360 degrees to radians. And that is this many radians, so we're going to copy that number, go back to Blender, and instead of 360, we're going to place this value. So, now it will rotate 360 degrees when we have our rotation set to 1. But you're going to notice that this is still incorrect, and that's because it's rotating each step around 360 degrees, so they all end up in the exact same point. So, you probably guessed it by now, but for the rotations, we need to take this entire thing and divide it by the amount of steps. So, now each step will rotate a portion of the 360 degrees to equal a total of 360 degrees among all of the steps. And we're going to make a count variable for that. It's going to say error, but that's because we haven't made our variable yet. So, count, and we're going to go back to our empty, open bracket, quotation marks, count, quotation marks, close bracket. Notice the text here. It might be a little bit small on YouTube, but that is open bracket, quotation marks, count, quotation marks, close bracket. So now you'll notice that the stairs are rotating properly. So if we up the rotations by any amount, let's say we want three rotations, now it will rotate around three times fully. But let's go to two, and that seems pretty good. So then for the height, which is our final variable to driver into to <laughs> drive into our procedural model that's funny because I'm using drivers uh, you, you don't have to laugh at that that was awful so how we do that is we go to our dimensions we don't want to bother with the scale we want to bother with the dimensions we'll add a single driver and we will add a variable height and that will be the empty.001 a single property open bracket quotation marks height quotation marks close bracket then in, under our expression that actually defines how tall it is, we type height, since that is the name of our variable. So now, if we go to our properties, which right here, I'm, I'm going to this area as opposed to this area because it's easier, you have more screen room to slide the variables over here. So now we can up the rotations, we can up the height, and we can up the count of our stairs. And that is how you make a simple procedural staircase or spiral staircase in blender i hope you enjoyed this tutorial it was a short one but hopefully you learned some valuable information about drivers and hopefully it was a little bit easier to follow than the house uh, procedural mansion tutorial so if you enjoyed this tutorial make sure you subscribe for a new tutorial every tuesday and that will be all i will see you all next week well i won't actually see you but you will see my video, hopefully. So, later!